You know, I don't think I used my amiibo since last time. Like, I don't... I ended last time, and I don't think I used my amiibos in between sessions. In between recordings, so I... I don't think I did. You would think I remember if I did or not. But nope, it was a pretty uh, busy couple of days. So I don't remember if I did. I don't think I did. Yeah, my rupees are still at 860, so I definitely didn't. Okay. Wait, hold on. Uh, let me open that back. I need that to see the chat. Okay. Scratch my back, and let's get going. So, I have a plan of what something I want to do this time. And it involves me going down here. Yeah, I gotta go down there. So, I think the quickest way would be to go over, go here. Let me just get a sip of water before I get started. Because you've read the title. You know what I'm going to talk about. I am I'm using You might be you might be wondering why I'm even doing this, but I'm using a plastic reusable straw. It's a hard plastic. It's a plastic meant to meant to last. You might be wondering why don't I use a metal straw? You know, one that's truly meant to be reusable. Well, I remembered in my cabinet I had this. So I figured, hey, I may as well save the five bucks it costs to buy a metal straw and just use this for the time being. I mean, it works fine. It's not broken, it's not scratched, it's not damaged. All I, all I have to do is just simply rinse it like I would a metal straw, and it works fine. And yeah, you can argue a, a plastic straw is is not as a not as safe or whatever. It will it'll wear and tear. But for now, it does the job. Let's see on the map. So I gotta go. I gotta go all the way down. Do I want to take on this camp? Hmm. I have, what, 11 hearts right now? So I still need two more. Oh boy, I can't wait till I get two more. Wait, don't. Come on, hurry up, hurry up. I still need 1,800 to get the Ashika armor. So I still need a good thousand rupees before I can do that. Right in the back. Right where the right right below where the nape of the neck is. Did they hear me? This is a real shiny shield I got on my back. Look at them, they're inside dancing and celebrating. How do I want to do this? I'll get to talking after a... Just after. That was a fail. That was a major fail. Okay, guess we're doing this. Dude got flung. All it takes is three of these to kill a blue one. Ah, 
Oh, why they gotta fly off the ledge, huh? Well, I can still get those. Matter of fact... Ah, oh, I, I can knock him off the ledge and I can just jump down to get his parts. Did I do it? Did I do it? Oh, he's still alive. You stupid. You're gonna go towards it to check it out. Ah, fine, whatever. Yo, what's up, fellas? Messed? Oh, I missed. <laughs> yeah, I did. There's still three of them in there. That's okay, it hit me a little bit, that's okay. So what you guys up to? Are you guys done school yet? Alright, just gonna stand still, let me hit you. Why not? There's no chest in here for me to get anyways. Uh, do I want these? I guess. This one, I mean, I use this. 26, not that much difference. Not that bad. Heal? Yeah, I will. Wait, take? Take what? Take the weapon? Nah. Let me see, is that dude still alive down there? Yeah, he is. Ha <laughs> ha. You stupid. You're going to walk towards it and investigate? Okay. Matter of fact, where I'm going, I'm not going to heal just so I can show something off. I am heading in the wrong direction. I need to go this way. So yeah, I'm using a, uh, <laughs> totally got off topic, I'm using a plastic reusable straw. It's not a, it's not a, a soft plastic sort where you, where, you know, you typically get outside and you just throw it out right after using it. No, this one is a hard plastic. This one I can reuse. You know, this one, uh, I could literally rinse the inside. Well, I guess you could do that with any straw. But this one's meant to last. So I'm just going to use this until it, you know, actually deteriorates and then I'll buy a metal straw. I'm using this instead of a metal straw like I said because I forgot I had this. So I figured I'd save the five bucks that it would cost to buy a metal straw if I already have one that works just fine. Oh, you spotted me? Don't worry, I'll get to the main topic in a sec. Right before doing this, I played Age of Calamity. I was I meant to do it earlier, but then things happened, I got pushed back, and I had to do it at night time. <coughs> Cause I had the day off of work today. Man, I'll just I'll just hack you. I swear you kill me. There we go. I had the day off of work today. So I was meant to record. Uh, you said you were going to make your hot chocolate like 15 minutes ago. If he, No, 25 minutes ago. All right, let's get to the let's get to the main topic, the big one. Smallville. The I don't even know what network it was originally on, and then it moved to the CW. 
Uh, how am I meant? Oh, look at that. Wasn't what I was planning. I mean, I knew that was here, but I totally forgot. So let's just get it done. Let's just go do it. Smallville, whatever network it was originally on. Lurlin Village, this is what I wanted to come and do. So, the show went from 2001 to 2011, giving us, well, technically 216 episodes, because episodes 216 and 217 were a two-part series finale. Like a two-hour series finale. So it did. It was technically just one big episode. Same with Absolute Justice. That was a name I forgot earlier. So technically, Smallville gave us two episodes that are uh, that were uh, two-parter. So, last night, I finished the final season. Look at that, just a metal chest, just just, just for the taking. But you do have to aim it between the bars, because if you do this, aim it on the bar, it won't, it won't take it. You have to aim between the bars. So last night, I watched the final episode. I'll take a fresh one, why not? I saw the final episode last night, or rather episodes, but like I said, it was just one. How do I... Should be something around here I gotta use. Do I hit a switch that's back there? Oh, no, I used the chest. Oh man, I can't. There's so much to talk about about the show because there were ten seasons. Do I bring that chest again with me? I, um, maybe, maybe I do need to. But let's just take a look first. I think I might need that. So, I began watching this show, I don't even remember when, like the exact date. So let's, let's see, let's count backwards. I finished the show on December 21st? Yeah, because I saw it yesterday, and today is, or right now, it's December 22nd at 9, at, not 9, at 10.20, 10.20 p.m. What? So I finished the show on December 21st, 2020. Let's see, 216 episodes. And then I also watched Birds of Prey in between, so that was uh, so that was 13 episodes, so 13 days. Because I watched one episode a day, 216 plus 13. Is that, what is that? 216 plus 13, 229? So, I started watching the show 229 days prior. So, there we go. Someone someone can do the math. Someone can count backwards. Now, the only reason I watched this show was because of the, the cameo crossover scene in Crisis on Infinite Earths. Canonizing the entire 10 seasons of the show. It's like, well, I watch everything, so now I got 10 seasons of show to watch. And I'm not disappointed that I watched this. The show had its good moments and uh, and bad moments, obviously. You go for 10 years, of course there's going to be good and bad. There were some amazing episodes, and there were some episodes that were just... We could have lived without. Ah yes, just one more spirit orb, and I can get my 12th heart, and then four more I can get my 13th heart, and then the fun begins, the actual fun. 
But it's not until I finish the fourth dungeon that the real fun begins. I think. I think I need to... Wait. I don't even remember when I am able to do the Trial of the Swords. I couldn't have come... I couldn't have visited Lurlin Village at a better climate. No, let's, let's walk into Lurlin Village. See the palm trees too? There are coconuts on top. Yep. Don't mind if I do. I said, yep. Don't mind if I do. So let's talk about the show. I see a lizard over there. So the show obviously had 10 seasons. First four seasons were just about Clark Kent being in high school. And a lot, and I mean a lot, of teenage romance storylines. And then season, well that was basically it for season the four seasons. All four seasons was about one year in high school. Which it barely was about, thank goodness. It wasn't about studying, none of that. It was more about Clark fighting your typical villain of the week. Which I, I find to be a little cringe, a little, a little lame. How every single villain every time was just affected by Meteor Rocks, which is Kryptonite. Can I take this this helmet off? I don't, don't want to scare the folks, man. Can't do that anyways. And then season five, you know, graduated high school. Clark went to college for like three episodes. And then we find out his professor, Professor Milton Fines, is actually Brainiac. Played by a, an actor who I've seen in the past. I don't know his name. But I've seen him play like damn near the same character on The Runaways. An evil alien, even with his own ship. So I guess Clark just dropped out of college? Because he never went back. I see a crab down there. Nothing. I, I don't even remember like what's what storyline applies to what season. There's just so much. I'm pretty sure the Lex and Lana love story happened in season six. Oh my goodness, the characters. But let me talk about the plot first. Season seven, I can barely remember what the plot even was about. Because there's just so much. Season 7, I think, was about... Uh, was it about Veritas? Can I not just take them? No? Oh, that's odd. I swore I could have just taken them. Look, there's Kilton over there. Uh, season 8 was, you know... Uh Oh crap, I can't even remember. What wait, what happened in season 8? Crap, I can't even remember. All I remember of season 8 was a whole bunch of new characters came in. Season 9 was with General, not General, Major Zod. Then season 10 was the story barely about Dark Side and Apocalypse. Let me think. Season 3 was about the Teague family and the Mystical Stones. Kind of like Smallville's version of the Infinity Stones, only less powerful. And there's only three of them. Got salted caramel hot chocolate. Sounds good. Do you have whipped cream on it? Is there marshmallows? <laughs> so 
So Kilton here will take anything monster-related and exchange it for Mon, his own currency. Mm. Well, there's not there, not much from Kilton that I really want, aside from one set of armor. I can give some of these. What am I ever going to use these for? Uh, give like 50. Whoops, meant to... The Zalfos mask! Yeah, 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 yeah. So you can buy more monster extract. It's for cooking. W uh, pretty useless items, especially this. I could get this. I c Wait, 99? No, I can't get both. Oh yeah, trust. We're gonna get all these eventually. But for now... Let's just, uh, let's just leave until we have enough to buy them all at once. So, back to Smallville. Uh, I really can't remember what happened in Season 8. Season 1 and 2 was just the basic, uh, starting out story. There was no real, uh, um... There was no real story, not story, uh, season long story, there it is. It was just a typical story of the week that might have culminated a little bit to an overall story, but really not that much. I forget what season was the, the cave paintings. Was that season four? That might have been, se no, that, was that season two? I can't remember now. There was just so much going on. Season 3, like I said, was about the Teague family with those mystical stones. Season 4... Oh, jeez. I'm forgetting. Does, I, I just saw this the show, too. Season 5 was about Brainiac, I think. Or at least Brainiac was a big part. He was a recurring villain. Aha! Aha! More treasure! Oh, it's just, it's just a rusty claymore. I don't want that. Did I decide on my new dog's name? His name is Sky, I've told you. Unless you're talking about the other new dog, which we don't have. Gonna need a lot of wood for a big side quest later. So may as well just stock up whenever we can. Yes, we can finally see Lurlin Village nice and clear, nice and bright. Alright, enough of the plot. Nobody cares about the plot. Let's talk about the characters, the highlight of the entire show. So obviously you have your main character, Clark Kent. Played by Tom Welling. Very good casting, in my opinion. I mean, there were times when he didn't exactly look like Clark Kent. But near the end, when he put on that that jacket, the glasses, the suit and tie. Yo, he looks exactly like comic book Clark Kent. I just spat everywhere. I'm not too disappointed that we never got to see him in a suit because we were promised that when the sh when the show started we would never see the actor put on the suit mostly because that wasn't the point of the show the point of the show was talking about a young version of Clark Kent and him growing up to become Superman and also because the actor himself refused to wear the suit Ooh, I see a I see a bug over there So Clark with his hero gig, you know, his need to protect everyone, always jumping in to save everyone. Blah, 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 blah. Jeez, what else can I say about him? 
Man, this man is so lucky, you know? Throughout the entire show, you know how many women were trying to get up on that? Let's see, the most obvious, you had Lana Lang and Lois Lane. You had Chloe Sullivan. You had uh, Alicia... I can't even remember her last name. Alicia Baker? You had Zatanna, who surprisingly had a thing for Clark. You even had Tess Mercer, uh, implied that she had feelings for Clark. It's like, yo, how many, how many women can this one man possibly woo over? Let's see. Let's see. Oop. Talking about other characters. Zatanna is on Smallville? Yeah, she appeared. She appeared for a couple of episodes. She was played by... Oh, crap. I forget her name. Something Swan. Her last name is Swan. The actress's name. I forget her first name. I think her last name is Swan. Anyways, uh, let's talk about some other characters. Characters like Pete Ross. A very good character in the early parts of the season. A character who is very obvious that he won't stick around for the entire show. He left after season 3 and only ever came back to the show once. I'm amazed he did not return at all after that one point. You know? It's like, well, I guess Clark just didn't invite him to the wedding. You know, your best friend in high school, even though he moved away, uh, he didn't turn up to your wedding, so... Uh, um, I guess he just wasn't invited. So you can buy fish and all that stuff here. Uh, there's a guy here that... Hmm, I think he's over there on the, on the shoreline. Pete was a great addition to the show, you know, compliment, com complimenting Clark on just their adventure. It was really great after he learned about Clark's identity. Learned about Clark's secret. I mean, I mean, I, I got pissed off because he got pissed off. He was lied to all this time that Clark was an alien. Like, what do you expect? You expect him to open up to you out of nowhere? Like, yo, yo, bud, I'm from another planet. Yeah, 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 please don't tell anyone. All right, let's, let's get back to playing basketball. Like, what'd you expect? Of course he was going to keep that a secret. He got so pissed off. It's like, how can you be mad at him for keeping this a secret? And then it, it took him a near-death experience to finally ex to understand and accept the fact that Clark hid this. You know, it's like, I, I now understand... Knowing your secret puts me in danger, so I apologize for being mad. It's like, what did you expect? You really think the government wouldn't hunt him out, hunt him down, and dissect him? That wasn't really what happened. There was some maniac wanting to know about the ship that Clark came in for. I forget it was if it was for Lex or Lionel. I'll talk about those two in a second too. And then you have Chloe Sullivan. Say what you will about Allison Mack nowadays, but let's just ignore that stuff. And let's just talk about her character, Chloe Sullivan. What? <laughs> an original character to the show. Like a, a, nice, a nice addition, too. Cousin of Lois Lane. I did not know that, because, you know, I didn't know the character. She was not brand new to the show. So when they, when they said... Uh, my cousin, her name is Lois Lane. I'm like, wow. So this whole time, this character is cousins to Lois Lane? Oh, I was just here. Where's that one guy I'm looking for? I don't really need to talk to him. I could just go and do it. Well, actually, I, he might be back at the, back at the village. Let's talk about probably the character I have the most issue with on this damn show, and that's Lana Lang. This person just will not leave the show. Obviously, Lana Lang is Clark Kent's first love in the in well in the story, in any story I think. 
It was it was the uh, it was his first crush, his high school crush before Lois came into his life. I think it was. Uh, is it this guy I need to talk to? Yeah, I think so. How about the ocean, Eventide Island. Ooh, we could do Eventide today. The treasure sleeps in the center of the Golden Triangle. I don't have a Korok Leaf, so... Uh, I'm not gonna use this. So many treasures buried. So many fish! So, talking about Lana Lang. So, she was the, you know, very typical beautiful high school girl that everyone wanted to be with you know especially Clark season one when she had she when she had the the football jock boyfriend you know what was his name again Whitney I forget his last name that's nobody nobody cares nobody cares about his last name I think he died in like season two he, he joined the army for for some reason something about honoring his dad and then he just died. He came back in one episode, but it turns out it was the uh, shapeshifter from a previous episode. Clark found out, and then he tr he tried to warn Lana like your boyfriend, your ex, or whatever. That's not him. She got all mad at him un unnecessarily. Like you, you're just mad because he's back in our lives. You've seen. So many things happen in your high school, you know, people with special abilities, and you're really gonna question, like, oh, you're saying it's this shapeshifter. Maybe I should believe you. A guy named Whitney? What's wrong with that? Nothing wrong with that. <clears throat> So, my biggest issue with Lana is the fact that she hella overstayed her welcome. Like, she, st she was on the show for way too long, I feel. Whitney, the gym leader from Pokemon? Yeah, the normal type gym leader with the mill tank. So, I don't have a Korok Leaf. I could get one, but that'll take up a... A weapon slot, so I'll just do this on my way there. I gotta let these Octoroks get in my way. I mean, I'm sure I mentioned this back when I, when I started the show. I'm like, yo, Whitney's such a dick in the show, but... Truth is, I can't even be mad at him. I mean, damn near the same thing happened to me in back in I back in when I was in high school. You know, how how would you feel if um uh, um um if you were in high school and this other guy really wanted to get to get with your girl? Like, I can't even be mad at him for that because I understand that. But then again, he was he was just a dick. He was a dick to to Clark a lot too. Episode freaking one. He he tied this man up. He tied Clark up to a scarecrow post, stripped him to his boxers, and painted an S on his chest. What, because he was nerdy? That's that's what passed for early 2000s high school pranks. Nowadays, you can't even do a spitball without being expelled from the school. Back then, you literally get get took. Back then, you get took. You could be chained up. You could be burned. You could you could be waterlogged. Probably not. You could be tortured, and the school would just brush it off as all right, no bullying. Nowadays, you know, at least that's good. Nowadays, you you can't get away with that much. Imagine being Superman and letting him do that to you. Well. That's the thing. That was season one. That was ten years before this man became Superman. And obviously, he was keeping his identity a secret. He was keeping his his powers, 
an origin a secret from everyone. Well, except his parents. Because they obviously would know. Can I really not hit you? I can't just do this, otherwise the ice will break. And then, and then this dude had the nerve to be like, I don't even remember when, maybe later on in season one. He was like, yo Clark, no hard feelings, right? I know I, I know I pinned you up to a scarecrow, whatever, something that holds a scarecrow. I, I, I basically just stripped you naked and I humiliated you. Yo, no hard feelings, right? That was just a high school prank. It's like, are you, are you serious? You, you really have to ask? Shock dart? No, I'm not gonna waste a, a shock arrow. He has two HP. I didn't hit him? He has two HP left. There we go. Alright, what other characters were there? Oh, I haven't even finished talking about Lana. This, this girl has super overstayed her welcome. You know, when I, when I started the show... I was expecting, because it was 10 seasons long, 5 seasons with Clark and Lana, and then 5 seasons with Lois and Lana. Not Lois and Lana. <laughs> what a fantasy that would be. Lois and Clark. Lois and Lana. Oh my goodness, imagine that. Because I even knew going into the show that Lois Lane would be introduced to the show in season four. So that's what I thought. I thought five seasons with Lana, five seasons with Lois. Nope! Lana stayed on the show for seven seasons. They even introduced Lois. I'm like, please, enough of this. I just want to see Clark with Lana. Not Lana. God damn it. With Lois. We all know it's going to happen. We all know it's meant to happen. And yet, you drag on Lana for seven long seasons. Lana, that girl with Poplio? What do you mean? What do you mean I... I uh... Wait, what was that? Was that Thunder... Whatever. I don't need to pick up all of these anyway. Let's see what's in them. We all know it's meant to be Clark and Lois. Lois and Clark, you know? Not Lana. At, th at, at that point, seven seasons with this girl, it's like, you, you may as... Oh, I already got this. You may as well just have made the show about Clark and Lana. You may as well just changed the original source material story. Clark never ended up with with Lois. He, what if he stayed with Lana the whole time? Because at that point, that's what you were doing. All right, let's uh, let's get back. They didn't even end her story off good, anyways. They 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 sent this character off horribly. What do you mean? They're not related. Uh, Lois and Chloe were cousins. Uh, Lois and Lana were just friends. So no incest there. What what you talking about? So they got together, I think, in season 5. Clark and Lana. Finally! God damn it! But then, the usual stuff. Clark... With his secrets, Clark with the secrets, like, he, he was so unwilling to tell Lana that, hey, I'm from a planet named Krypton, I'm an alien. He was so unwilling to tell her that that's what destroyed the relationship. Lana was like, I can't have secrets between us, we shouldn't. We shouldn't have secrets, and Clark just would not tell her for the life of him. It's like, if you simply told her. I would have told her. There were so many times when you should have told her. Like, oh my goodness. There was one episode. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention this too. But 
if you haven't seen the show, then spoiler alert, but, you know. I, I mean, I guess the show only came out about 20 years ago. And only ended about 10 years ago. So yeah, spoiler alert. But hey, okay. So there was an episode where Clark flat out told Lana his origin, like his heritage or whatever, that he's Kryptonian. He even brought her to the Fortress of Solitude. I'm like, are you dreaming? Like, that was one of my issues with the show. Sometimes the episodes... Sometimes the episodes just started out of nowhere. Like, the, the story for the episode just started. You're like, wait, where was the build-up? There was nothing giving us any hints that this would happen. So Clark telling Lana, I thought it was a dream. I thought he was dreaming that he, that he told her and then brought her to the fortress. And to make it even seem like more of a dream, he proposed to her on the spot and she said, well... Well, she had to think about it first. And then she said yes. I'm like, this man has to be dreaming. This man has to be dreaming. And then it's like, no. No, this is real. He really told her. And he really just did that. And she really said yes. Wow, he was not dreaming. And then she died in the episode. So Clark had to time travel back. Prevent all of that. You know, she, he, he basically said, Oh, that thing I was about to, to tell you. Yeah, uh, just, just forget it. And then that's when Lana was like, You know what, you and your secrets, I'm done. I can't do this anymore. I would have told her right there, like, Okay, you're about to leave me. Let me tell you the truth. Like, I'm from Krypton. I'm an alien. And the reason I'm so hesitant right now is because I did this already and you died. It's like that would be an appropriate time to tell her. But no, he just had to not tell her. I understand that he really wanted to protect her no matter what. Even if that means not being with him. So not telling her the secret ever. But come on, you, you gotta know when to draw the line somewhere. Somewhere you gotta say, this is the time to tell her. It would be like, wait, but she would have died again. No, nah, nah, he knows what would happen. He knows the reason that made her leave. Well, well, uh... What, what happened in the episode was they had an engagement party, I think. And Lana left because... At, no, wait. What season was this? This was, this was season 5, I think. Lana left because Lex was like, Can you come over? I, want, I need to talk to you. Because I kind of suspected it, but I never wanted it to happen. But Lex Luthor also had feelings for Lana. Which, what a surprise. I don't need that. I think that's a sledgehammer. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yes! So then, uh, Lex kissed Lana. She ran off. And then Lex was chasing her, trying to apologize. And then she got hit by a truck in her car. And that's how she died. With this knowledge, Clark should have knew that, uh, that she would be leaving the party. Just say, Lana, don't leave this party. Done. Oh my goodness, this was the exact same episode, I think, that Jonathan Kent died. But I'll talk about that after. But Lana... What, what... The way she found out about Clark was she had to, she had to hide behind a wine cellar. And she had to, she had to spy on Clark to see if he really does have powers. Because she was suspecting it. This is one of the hardest Koroks in the game, so let's see if I can do this. Come on, let's see if I can do this. Yes! Oh! Yo! I was...
was gonna climb back up and just put it on position. Look at that! I did that blind! Look, I was meant to put the rock up here, and then place it right here, sorta, to get this Korok. I did that whole thing blind! Look, what, what, uh, what I think you're supposed to do... Let me show you. Let me show you, because, uh, when I first did this, this took me so long, and I... Well, I still did it. Look, what you're supposed to do... So, you're supposed to... Where's the house? Wait, where's the ha where'd the house go? Oh, there it is. All these rocks over here, what you're supposed to do... Is you're supposed... Wait, wait, I didn't pick it up, so that way that it's not loose. There we go. What you're supposed to do is you're supposed to do this. And try to knock it on top of that house. And that's not easy, because it'll bounce off and all that. Oh, jeez, I'm really glad I got that on camera. That scream woke up my family. I'm sorry. That was a hype moment just now. Anyways, Lana found out about Clark's powers on her own. She was already suspecting it, but Clark just would not budge and just flat out tell her. She was hiding behind a wine cellar. What she did was she purposefully locked Chloe into a freezer... So Chloe had to call Clark, be like, help, I'm trapped. Uh, Lana hid behind a bunch of wine cellars, so neither of them saw her. And Clark used his super speed to to rip off the door. He used his heat vision to, to melt the locks back on. And then they were having a talk, like, the re like I'm amazed you never told Lana your powers, because she's about to marry Lex Luthor. And you're just going to let that happen. Simply because you won't tell her your secret. So she found out... Like... I wanted to, to rub this in her face. Pause. So hard when this happened. So throughout the series, she, she got so mad. Every time Clark was, uh, was secretive because of his powers... Like, she's always like, why won't you ever open up to me? Why won't you tell me? It's like, first of all, that's none of your goddamn business. Second, like, she got so mad that she that he wouldn't tell him, tell her his secret. So, when 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 the wedding wedding day came for Lana and Lex to get married, she was having second thoughts because now she knew Clark hid who he was. To protect her this whole time. But. Lionel comes in. He's like you are going to marry my son. Or else I will kill Clark Kent. Because I know his weakness. How how hard. Pause. I want to rub in her face. Like now you know. Now you know. How does it feel huh? You having to keep a secret to protect the person you love. How does it feel huh? Does, does it hurt? I bet it hurts. How badly you want to tell them. But you know you shouldn't, otherwise they'll be in danger. H how's it feel? How's it feel? You got mad at him for so many times, for so long, because he did this. How how's it feel, huh? I wanted to br I wanted to rub it in her face like, now you know. Now you know. This man had to do this for how many years? And you just doing this at this one time. How's it feel? Anyways, to answer you, is Lex evil in Smallville? Yes. I'll talk about the other characters too, but let me talk about finish talking about uh, Lana. My biggest issue with her, like I said, is the fact that she overstayed her welcome in the show. Season 6, she she had this weird love story with Lex Luthor. Like a, season 6 was just back to more romance drama. Because there, there was now this love triangle between Clark, Lex, and Lana. Which was hella unnecessary for the show. And by the way, like, I don't even know the age difference between them. Lex Luthor, when he first met Clark in Season 1... He was already a grown, a young adult man. 
He was at least, I would say, 18 or 19. While Clark and the other characters, they were just beginning high school, so they were 14 around. So, how long did Lex have feelings for Lana, a girl still in high school, while he was a grown-ass man? At least in his early 20s by the time, like, she graduated? So, let me talk about the way Lana exited the show. She was a series regular for six, no wait, for seven seasons, I think, yeah. Yeah, she was on the show for seven damn seasons. The way they wrote off her character was not in season seven, but in season eight. When she left the show as a series regular in season eight, I was so happy. But then she came back for us for like a three to four episode arc. Oh. I'm like, damn it. Did you see that? He tried to sell a banana for 99 rupees. <laughs> so when she came back, it was still Lana and Clark. The way they written her off was the fact that Lex uh, was about to either kill a bunch of people or have Lana sacrifice herself, in a way, sacrifice herself to, to stop their relationship. Where am I going? Well, I already went that way. I know there's a Stalnox down there, but I'll do that. I'll do that eventually. Not right now. So Lex was about to kill a bunch of people with Kryptonite, or because at this point Lana had powers, had had Clark's powers, they both had powers. So Lana was able to absorb the radiation that would have came off from that Kryptonite weapon. Only thing is, she would be radiated with Kryptonite, so Clark can't be next, can't be close to her, so they can't be together. That's how they writ her off. She left the show because she was literally unable to be with Clark anymore. They never resolved that. They, they never finished that story. It's basically, I'm poisonous to you, so I have to leave. This is goodbye. And they never brought her back. They never were like, okay, we solved the issue. Oh, you're with Lois now. I see. That's okay. I'm with someone else now, too, because that's what was meant to happen. Nope. They just left the door open. They just, they never completed the story. They never completed that story. That pissed me off so much. I was watching season 10. I'm like, are they really not going to resolve this story? So Lana's just out there somewhere, unable to forever see Clark again. Just because they're to get, they're not together anymore, doesn't mean they can't be friends and still hang out. But nope. Guess she really can't. Guess they're, the, guess they can't even be friends anymore. Which I gotta say, the one, the one amazing thing about the show was how, was how strong a connection Clark and Lana had. Like, they, they don't have to be dating. They don't have to be friends. They don't have to be, like cool with each other at the moment. They could be totally pissed off at each other. They still always found a way to get things better. It's like they they live through all the awkward moments with with so much how do I say this? Like they handled it like adults. They were really mature with the way that they were that they were friends still. Lana was like, I know you have feelings for me, but let's keep it mutual. Let's keep it uh, respectful. And that's exactly what they did. Oh, Clark broke your heart by keeping secrets? Oh, well, I guess that would affect you guys. Nope, you guys still hang out like normal. Okay. Oh, you're about to marry Lex Luthor. Well, that must put a dent in you. You know, your spirit. Your The girl you love is marrying your worst enemy. Oh, 
You're, you're still gonna hang out like normal? Okay. Like, the way they they really portrayed their, their characters, the actors, throughout all the trials that were in their path, they, they handled it amazingly. Anyways, I think I've I think I spewed of enough about this this character Lana. Once again, my my character my my character my issue with this character is that this bitch just didn't leave the show. It's like please, just leave the show. It's not like the character was bad too. It's just we know what's happening. We know what will happen, and you're not gonna be part of it. So please, just. Quit overstaying your welcome. Flash's appearance on Smallville. That technically wasn't Flash. That was Impulse. Let's let me talk about arguably the best character on the show. Lex Luthor. Portrayed by Michael Rosenbaum. Yo, he was he is Lex Luthor. He is the perfect Lex Luthor. The best Lex Luthor. I would say second best would be John Cryer. I mean, we've had other iterations like Kevin Spacey, we've had uh, Jesse Eisenberg. I don't even remember the actor's name in the 1978 films. But Lex Luthor, I really like the way they handled this character and his story arc. I hated how they ended it. But the way they actually did it, did his character in the early season, season one, what happened was he ran over Clark off a bridge. Clark saved him, and that's how they met. That's how they became friends. They were friends in the early seasons. They were good friends. They were they were practically brothers. But you know, uh, uh, Lex Luthor's eventual decline into madness. He became sinister. He became evil. It's like you know what? I'm I'm sad because I liked the like the. The nice Lex Luthor, but I'm really happy we finally get to see an evil Lex Luthor. I see another Korok. And I see a wooden chest. Would you? You know, one thing I will say, I'm really happy they, they didn't do for long was the Julian story. There was a whole story about uh, Lex's dead younger brother and that how that affected him mentally. And then eventually in what season six or season five I can't remember his younger brother Julian showed up out of nowhere. He's like oh he's alive this whole time your dead brother was alive so what was the point of all that? I would have been pissed if this whole time his brother was alive and he was just faking all his mental health issues because of his dead brother. I am I was so happy when they revealed oh he cloned him. He took his own DNA and cloned cloned himself a copy of his brother. Okay, thank goodness. Cuz if it if they revealed his brother was alive the whole time, what was the point of the previous stories? Yep. Damn it! I didn't get the lizard. You know what? Let's try Eventide. Why not? I have I have a good amount of hearts. Eventide's not easy either. So Lex, let me think. Okay, I hated the way they ended his character. End of season 7. I even knew going in, uh, Lex was only going to be on the show for 7 seasons. <clears throat> so when, when the season 7 finale came, and Lex did not show up for season 8, I'm like, really? That's how you writ off the character? Season 7. The ending of Season 7 paved the way for a perfect Lex Luthor storyline. But nope, they wasted it because I, I, I don't think it was their fault. I don't think, I don't think uh, 
Michael Rosenbaum wanted to come back because I think he said seven seasons. I think that's enough. They could have written him off better, though. Like, he, he got crushed by the collapsing Fortress of Solitude. And Season 8, well, that's it. He found out Clark's identity. He was in the Fortress of Solitude. And that's it. And then Season 8, he was really... He was really damaged. He was injured. He was on the brink of death. But he was still working. He was still fine. It, like, he was still functional. Until Oliver Queen killed him. I was really hoping. I was really hoping he was still alive. Because I knew in the series finale, Lex Luthor became president. Really? But nope, it turns out the Lex Luthor that appeared in the series finale is yet another clone. He is the clone. He is the perfect clone. It turns out the only thing missing was a heart. And Lionel Luthor from another Earth gave him his heart. Well, not really by will because he was dying. How's my day been? It's been okay. So I hated the way they ended Lex Luthor's story. What really pissed me off so much was in the season, f not season, the series finale. Lex got all his memories erased. He lost all his memories. All seven years that we've seen of him experiencing things, all of that was erased. He, for he forgets Clark. He forgets Lionel Luthor. He forgets Lana Lang. He forgets all his hatred, all his pain. He forgets everything. Honestly, everything. So you brought the- you killed the real Lex. You clone him in the season f I keep saying season. The series finale, you clone him, and you erase all his memories, experiences, everything. It's like, what the hell was the point? So, basically, the Lex Luthor that became president is a blank slate. He's not really Lex. Lex Luthor became president in the Justice League animated series? Oh, that's interesting to know. i never seen it. I'll talk about the series finale later, because I have so many issues with that. But first, let me talk about the other characters. Lionel Luther, Possibly the most despicable character I've ever seen on, on, on anything. On shows, on films, on anything. At first, he was a horrible person. Early seasons, he was like the worst person you could ever know. But, as he, you know, as he grew, as he learned about Clark's secret... As he became Jor-El's vessel, he really became to change. He really became a better man. Still doing some bad things here and there, but for the good of Clark. I really liked the way Lino turned out, but, like, that's the thing. They made me sad when Lex kills his own father. It's like, no, I liked Lino now. Lionel didn't deserve to die that way. In a way, he did. Well, his old self did. But not not the current version. So, let's go around. Should I do that? Because there's a shrine all the way over there. Oh my goodness, will you just die? No, don't use bomb arrows. <clears throat> Let me think. Let's talk. Uh... So Lex's obsession with finding out the truth about Clark, because you know he he wasn't wrong. How could Clark have saved Lex if he was a normal person? Clark hit him with this car, and they and flew off the bridge. How could Clark have survived? 
and even swam down to Lex's sinking car, ripped open the door, and pulled him out. Like, if, if, if Clark was normal, how could he have done that? So, of course, Lex would want to know the truth. He would want to know the answer to that. But Clark never told him. Because he was a Luther. Lex was like, had you simply told me, had you simply trusted me, I could have protected you. I could have made, we could have saved so many lives working together. He, he, he wasn't wrong. Had Clark simply told Lex the truth from the beginning, everything would have changed. But because they were Luthers, that they couldn't be trusted. So in a way, in a way, Clark did create his own, his own greatest, uh, his own greatest enemy being Lex Luthor by not telling him the truth. I would have loved to see an Elseworlds take, like, what if Clark really did tell Lex at the beginning? But nope, no such thing. I, I love that one line that Lex said, you know, when uh, when he was shot in his in his uh, bunker place, and Lana was beside him, trying to trying to patch up the wound. He's like, "Do you think I look better with hair?" Like Lex had some of the best lines. When he when he had Bart captured, he Bart was like, "I want a lawyer." Lex was like, "And I want a ponytail." We don't always get the things we want. I want a lawyer, and I want a ponytail. Yep. Oh wait, I was talking about Lionel Luther, wasn't I? So, a part of me was a little... A part disappointed and a part happy... That when they brought back Lionel Luther for the final season, despite being an alternate Earth version, he was evil again, like more evil than ever. It's like, okay, this guy's still a, an absolute prick. But it's like, why would you ruin the, the character that I've grown to like? The character that became a good man after being such a horrible person. And I mean, a, what a horrible person. I'm sure Lucifer would have had fun torturing him down in hell. Because we all know Lucifer does exist. Speaking of Lucifer, there was a damn Lucifer Morningstar name drop in the series finale. They even mentioned how, you know, Morningstar means Lightbringer. I'm like, oh my goodness. <laughs> that is so incredible. Because, you know, to the world... We didn't know it at the moment, but six years later, Lucifer Morningstar would actually get his own TV show. Did I get that? Yeah, I got that Korok. And what's fascinating, on Lucifer's TV show, on his Earth, Cain from the Bible looks exactly like Clark, because they're both played by Tom Welling. So Clark's doppelganger is Cain from the Bible. That's just shocking. That's amazing. They, of course, Lucifer would know this. He, he even had a, a Superman reference. He was talking to Cain. It's like, everyone has a kryptonite. Of course, Lucifer would know on an alternate Earth, Cain looks exactly like Superman. Anyways, let's talk about another character. How about Lois Lane? I like the way that they portrayed... The romance uh, starting. You know, Lana had just left because she was literally unable to be with Clark anymore. No, wait, was that the reason? No, that wasn't the reason. The reason was uh, because she was threatened to say it's too dangerous to be with you, so I gotta leave. Or something like that. Maybe it was, I'm holding you back, so, you, so you're better off without me. And then, you know, with Lana off the show for a while, for a sh very short while, 
uh, uh, Lois and Clark's story began to take shape. When, when they were met with the, uh, the, the engagement killer or whatever, the person that killed couples who are engaged, he was like, he, first of all, he put them both on a lie detector test and they would, he would shock them if they were lying. So, you know, when he, when he asked Lana, uh, not Lana, when he asked Lois, do you love him? She said yes, and the lie detector did not go off. He, Clark was not shocked, so he, she was telling the truth. Clark's face of absolute shock was, was priceless. He's like, Lana, why'd you lie? I'm about to be shocked. And then when he wasn't shocked, he was like, wait, what? I'm, I'm looking at you, Lois, what? You, you mean you've been hiding this this whole time? And then, uh, really bothered me at the end of the episode. She was like, "Oh yeah, when you when you weren't looking, I slipped off the lie detector thing, so that's why it, that's why I didn't go off." I mean, that really makes sense too. Typically, like normally, it's Clark that has feelings for Lana, not Lana. I keep saying Lana. It's Clark that has feelings for Lois first. But not in this time. Not this time. Because that makes sense. Clark is just getting over Lana. And, you know, Lois actually lived with Clark for a couple... I don't even know how long. Like, they lived together because Lois bummed off him in their house for a little bit. So it makes sense that over the years... Lois would develop feelings for Clark, but not Clark for Lois, because that makes a lot of sense. So I'm fine with that change. With instead of Clark liking Lois first, it was La uh, Lois that liked him first. I need a sip of water. Let me think, who else? Uh, what else was a good character? Oh, Oliver Queen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This should be a name that sounds familiar. Oliver Queen, portrayed by Justin Hartley on this show, was pretty good. Drastically different from the Oliver Queen we all know, played by Stephen Amell. But it's still pretty good. I still wish he grew up a beard, a goatee, something, instead of that bald ass baby face that he had, like clean shaven. Because that's more, that's more uh, realistic, that's more comic book accurate to. Oliver Queen. <clears throat> Lana Lang speaks Chinese? Uh, she did. I don't think, I don't remember how she learned it, but I remember she, she might have spoken a couple times. Did you just look up clips? So Oliver Queen, he went through this really bizarre but good character development little stage in his life. Like, what's the point of me being a hero? Even burned his suit and all that. Took Chloe, uh, took Chloe to push him over the edge to finally realize you are a hero. Something I found interesting with both shows being Smallville and Arrow. Is I thought I'm not a hundred percent sure on this, but I thought in the comics, the Green Arrow's identity was well known to be Oliver Queen by the public. So during Arrow, when Oliver announced that he was indeed Green Arrow, I'm like, finally, the public knows who Green Arrow is. Same thing with Smallville. Oliver Queen announced that he indeed was Green Arrow. So I'm like, finally. Even though I know there's a whole bunch of issues that come with your identity being known. So Oliver and Chloe, that's a really bizarre case. But I'll talk about that after, because that was one of my many issues with Season 10. Let me let me talk about one thing though. Season nine, the the wait no. Let me talk about this first. Season eight. 
Season 8, they introduced David... David. Davis. Davis Bloom, played by Sam Witwer, who I do like. He is a good actor. I've seen him in Supergirl. He played Agent Liberty, and he played the Tank Walker for like 10 seconds in Walking Dead. The very first episode. So I have seen his work in other places before. So Sam Witwer was an original character to the show because he played the human side for Doomsday. Doomsday has never had a human side. So he was sort of like the Hulk. He would transform into an uncontrollable beast. Okay, first of all, the, the prosthetics, the way Dark, uh, not Dark Side, Doomsday actually looked was absolutely horrible. It was, it was leathery. You could tell it was a leather suit. Then again, that was, I think, 2006 or 2000, wait. No, that, I think that was 2000, 2007 or two, 2007 to 2008. Now, I hated the way they, they, they ended Season 8. I even texted my boy who actually watched the show, too. Because it was that season, Jimmy Olsen and uh, Chloe Sullivan were going to get married. And they did, but, you know, secret identities, all that stuff, just tore them apart. <clears throat> At the very end, you know, Jimmy ex found out about Clark's secret, and he accepted it. It seemed like Chloe and Jimmy were going to have a, an actual life together, but nope. At the very end, Davis Bloom killed Jimmy Olsen. It's like, why? That's Jimmy Olsen. Why would you kill him? So, let me just say this. When I was watching season 8, I'm like, I texted my boy like, did nobody think to use Black Kryptonite? You know, separate Doomsday from his human side and his monster side and send Doomsday to the Phantom Zone? Major test of strength. I'm like, did nobody think of this? That's such an easy solution. Like, a really easy solution. <clears throat> and then, that's exactly what happened at the end of Season 8. Clark was like, I have an idea. We're gonna use Black Kryptonite, separate them, and send Doomsday to the Phantom Zone. I'm like, wow, I predicted it exactly. I was watching one episode a day, and I was, I was able to put that together. So I wonder in the past, when people had a week between episodes, how many people wondered why they didn't just do that. Uh, what do I want to use? Well, I have two of these, so why not use one? Hey, look at this. If I charge up a spear... Man, another bot in chat. <clears throat> so the whole point of the season was to, you know, save Davis Bloom, the human side, but get rid of get rid of Doomsday, the monster side. So at the end, they did indeed separate the two. But Davis Bloom still died at the end. It's like what the hell was the point? You wanted, the, the story writers wanted to save Davis Bloom, but get rid of Doomsday. But what was the point if you were just going to kill the character off anyways? Well, I could use this. I think, I, I think I'm just going to get another one of these. There we go. So I 
hated the way Season 8 ended, killing off Davis Bloom and Jimmy Olsen. <coughs> Excuse me. At the time, I was like, okay, guess we're going to kill off Jimmy Olsen, you know, Clark Kent's best friend, report, uh, good friend in the reporter business. I'll get back to that, because that was another issue I had in the season, the series finale. Climbing gear, yes! Do I have all three now? Yeah, that's all three! Awesome! So, so going into the show, I knew at the very end, Chloe and Oliver were going to get married. I just didn't expect it to be that way. I thought, I thought... Chloe and Jimmy were going to have issues with their marriage. They would separate and Chloe and Oliver would end up together. Nope. Turns out Jimmy Olsen died and that's why Chloe ended up with Oliver. Now what I'm going to do before I go to Eventide is I'm going to go back to Kakariko and get another heart container. Spoilers? Well, too bad. I did say the show was about 20 years old, so what? what's your excuse? What's your reason for not watching it if it's 20 years old? Be honest, you are never going to watch it anyways. If you haven't seen it yet, then you're not going to watch it. Unless you're someone like me, who watched, who did indeed watch it about 20 years later. You're, you're not going to watch the show. You're not going to watch all of it like I did. Anyway, Season 9. The character was good, but I did not like the actor. So, Season 9, the main villain was Major Zod. Not General Zod. Major Zod. Earlier in the show... General Zod was in the Phantom Zone. I did say General, right? General Zod was in the Phantom Zone. And he was a Phantom. And he took over Lex Luthor's body. Just to save budget on hiring another actor to portray uh, 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 General Zod at the time. So I'm glad they kept that continuity. The fact that the real... General Zod was in the Phantom Zone for later on, but in Season 9, the main villain was Major Zod, a guy like Zod who has not become General yet, and also not the real Zod. <clears throat> Excuse me. Season 9, Major Zod was a clone of General Zod, who arrived on Earth, uh, I can't even remember how. And I'm not a huge fan of Caleb Blue, the actor, being chosen to play General Zod in the show. First of all, he barely looked like General Zod. He really didn't look like Zod at all. And he talked really weird for Zod. He always talked like this, with his mouth really loose. He always talked like this for some reason. I don't know why he did that. Unless that's the actual actor's real voice, which... No disrespect. I feel like that was an act, though. That can't be actually how the, the actor talks. Like, he just let his lips really loose while he talked. It was really weird. I found it really weird how he talked. You will not deny me my destiny. I will have this planet, and I will restore Krypton to its full potential. He really talked weird. The way they actually stopped Zod was stupid. You know, he he wanted... Because they, they were underneath a yellow sun, the Kandorians didn't have any powers. So, you know, because of Clark's blood, they did gain powers. So he gave the rest of his Kandorians powers. 
Now the way the way the Kandorians turned on Zod was because he Zod killed the the woman with his child. So then he whispered in the Clark's ear, "Did you really do you really think I wanted to kill my own child?" And he whispered it to to Clark's ear and everyone heard him. He's like, "You stupid. You really think no you really forgot they had super hearing?" Okay, let's use this Korok leaf. <clears throat> when they brought him back for season ten to be uh to be J uh Zod in the Phantom Zone, they they the actor actually what the hell is going on with this damn raft? Hello. The actor actually grew a beard. It's like finally, he looks much more like like Zod with a beard. No more of that baby ass face, bald ass baby ass face of his. Finally, some facial hair. And what I really liked, I'm really happy they did was they kept the continuity. Major Zod, a clone of General Zod. The real Zod was in the Phantom Zone, as a Phantom, so without a body. So when his clone went to the Phantom Zone, he was like, I met someone, I met myself, my real self. I'm, I'm so happy they kept that continuity. So yeah, there were two different Zods in the Phantom Zone. So I guess Major Zod just absorbed his General Zod, so he gained all his memories. He, he gained the memory of Clark defeating him in, like, Season 3, which I was really happy about. To you who has traveled to this island, I present you with a challenge. In your, tra in your travels, you, you've relied on your equipment. I could not read all that. Here, you must cast this equipment aside and face this trial that only I could not read all that. Offer up the orbs to the three altars on this island. Only then will I could not read all that. <laughs> okay, we're doing Eventide Island. So yeah, basically the mission here is nothing. You have to rely on nothing. Only the things you find on the island. So let me talk about season 10. Probably the season I had the most issues with. Because, you know, a, a 10 year long show with 10 seasons, I was really expecting a really good final season. A, a final season to send the show off. One with a lot of good moments. Nope. The final season was pretty boring. Final season was mostly a bunch of filler with a whole bunch of unnecessary episodes. One of the episodes I absolutely hated. It's like, what was the point of this episode? There was no point to this episode. The only the only reason this episode even exists is to marry uh is to marry Oliver and Chloe, and that happened off-screen. They didn't have any memories because Zatanna well basically drugged them. So they had no memories of what happened the night previously. And turns out, Oliver proposed to, to Chloe, and yes, she said yes, and then they even have a marriage certificate. So those two got married off-screen, and neither of the characters had any memories of it happening. It's like, I hated that. Why would you do that? You, you married these two off-screen. By the way, anything you pick up on Eventide, you don't even keep. So there's no point in hoarding your stuff. You, you'll, get your, you'll get all your stuff back after you're done Eventide. But everything you pick up, you don't get to keep. So let me just, let me just uh, mention that. <clears throat> so 
so season 10, what should have been the main villain for season 10 was Darkseid. He showed up like three times. Not even in a full form, like in a shadowy form. It was all set up for Darkseid in the series finale. And oh my goodness, do I have issues with this with the final episode of the whole show. So final episode, Darkseid brought Apocalypse to Earth. Like he literally brought his planet and was about to crash it into Earth. So they saved Clark and Lois' wedding for the final episode. And it got interrupted because uh, Oliver got corrupted with the Omega symbol. And he was about to put gold kryptonite onto Clark, which permanently takes away his powers. Now, going into the show, I knew gold kryptonite would be somewhere. I didn't expect gold kryptonite to only show up two times. And both of those times were in the two final episodes. Like, going in, I knew gold kryptonite was a thing somewhere in the show. But it only appeared twice in the final two episodes. Am I gonna watch Wonder Woman? Hell yeah, I'm gonna watch Wonder Woman. You crazy? Of course I am. Yep, there's a chest out there. And there's a weapon here. So let me think, what other issues do I have with Season 10? So, Clark... <laughs> I, I, think this, I think the writer stuck with this rule, which I, I, I think might be official. No tights, no flight. So Clark, first of all, did not suit up as Superman until the final episode, which I was fine with. But they also didn't, didn't teach him how to fly until the final episode. It's like, that was a little unnecessary. Clark learned how to fly in the very final episode. Which was like, you know, why? Wait, I should save the rusty weapons. Just for now. Let me show you guys what to do with these rusty weapons. Am I allowed to save? Yeah, no, I can't. So if I die on Eventide, I have to start all over. And I really don't want to do that, because every time I play this, every time I do Eventide, I die so many times. <laughs> Sorry about this, but I need, I need to survive. I'm stranded on an island with enemies. Come on, kill these to shock them. I'll take this. You're so alive. Superman only flies in the final episode. Like after Darkseid shows up, that's pretty freaking bad. Not even. Darkseid took over Lionel Luther's body, so he did not he did not ever physically show up on the show. There was a shadowy figure of Darkseid, and that's the closest we got. Oh boy, it's thunderstorming. I think that's a staple in this in this part of the game. It always will thunderstorm. So take off metal weapons. There's a Hinox down there too. Now, I need three of these. I don't remember where the other two... Oh, I remember one. I don't remember where the last one is. But, let's let's try to do this really quietly. Don't want to accidentally wake up this Hinox. 
I'll take that. I'll take the good weapons. Take this. I'll throw it over there for now. Do you have any other weapons? No? Okay, let's uh let's try to get off of you without waking you up. How do you sleep outside during a thunderstorm? Dad, wake him up, Dad, wake him up. Not yet, not yet. Kill the giant blue, and it's pointless if I do right now. Just gonna take this. Yup, just gonna take this. You can see both his legs have armor on it too, so I can't even attack him. <clears throat> well, unless I have a bunch of spears, which I do, but not right now. <clears throat> so, the final episode. Oh boy, I have so many issues with it. Anything underneath this rock? Oh, there is a lizard. Take it. Yes. Can't you crawl up his nose and expand? Are you sure his nose shouldn't be somewhere more in the middle of the body? A certain orifice to go up and then expand? It doesn't matter which one of these you put into. As long as you just do all three. So that's one. I think there's three. I can only remember two. Oh, I can move now. Whoops. I know there's one up there, too. So, oh, oh, it's awake. Look at that, it's awake, but it doesn't see me yet. And stretch. And back to sleep. Oh, I don't have any arrows. <laughs> Just got it very carefully. You can see the orbs right there. You know what I should do? It's 8.50 p.m. in-game. I should wait for all these little things to go to sleep. <clears throat> oh, look. It's about to be sunny. Or rather, clear sky. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. So, anyways, another issue I had with the series finale. When Clark suited up and was on his way, was flying up to the s to space to take on Darkseid and stop Apocalypse from crashing into Earth. Yeah, it, it cuts to black. And then, seven years passed. The final fight took place off screen. I think they saw me, they saw me. Go, 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 go. Launch, launch. Is that enough? Yes, that's enough. Don't hit me, don't hit me, don't hit me. Okay, that's two. Now, I need to remember where the third orb is. You know what? I bet it's over there. I bet it, I bet that's it. I, I, I'm standing on a leaf. Oh! Didn't mean to go all the way down. 
I'm gonna heal just in case. So yeah, the, the whole final fight took place off screen. You see him about to face off against Darkseid and Apocalypse, then it cuts to black and seven years passed. I, I was so disappointed with that too. I mean, we finally got to see Clark suit up, but we didn't see him do anything up with it. And then that ending. And then the way they ended the show. You know, seven years pass. They're now in the year 2018. Clark and Lois, you know, Clark holding what should be their wedding rings is like, are you ready? I've been ready for seven years. You're telling me they put off the wedding for seven years? You're telling me that what we, what we were about to see, we saw them be, we saw them walking down the aisle. Well, they were about to put the rings on their fingers, and then because of Oliver, because he got taken over, the wedding got crashed. You're telling me they put off the wedding for seven years? Are you kidding me? That's how you end the show? You're telling me seven years pass and they're still not married? And then to, what really surprised me was Jimmy Olsen was back. I'm like, wait, how are you alive? And then Lois said, your brother made, uh, gave you some big shoes to fill. I'm like, oh, that's Jimmy Olsen's younger brother. So you're telling me, let me, let me see if I got the names right. So you're telling me, Henry James. Jimmy, Bartholomew Olsen died, but his brother, James, <laughs> wait, what was his name? James Henry Olsen, what, was, what the hell was his name? Let me look this up. Both of them had James in their name, so both of them were nicknamed Jimmy Olsen. Okay, I'm amazed I actually did Eventide on, on one attempt. Henry James Olsen is the brother that died. And then his brother, his younger brother, James Bartholomew Olsen, is, is the person, is actually the real Jimmy Olsen. He, so, so you're telling me... You're, his, oh, by the way, I, I finished it, so all my stuff is back with me. I don't get to keep none of the stuff I took from the island. I'm a fan, you guys, away. Alright, let's go up and do that shrine. So you're telling me his younger brother... His younger brother grew up to look exactly like his older brother. He also took his brother's name... Because both of them had James Olsen in their name. So both of them are nicknamed Jimmy Olsen... And then you're telling me that he also took his brother's job at the Daily Planet. You're, te you're telling me the younger Jimmy Olsen took his older brother's life. And I mean everything in his life. He took his appearance, his name, his job. So that's what you're telling me. It will, you know, I, f I would have found it hilarious because Aaron Ashmore, the guy that played Jimmy Olsen, I didn't know he had an identical twin brother. I thought it would have been hilarious if they got his twin brother to, to play the, the younger Jimmy Olsen. Just to, just to insinuate, yes, it is a different person who looks exactly the same. I thought that would have been perfect, but nope. They didn't want to pay another actor just for... I mean, it makes sense. He would have only been on screen for like 10 seconds. It's like, what's the point of paying another guy just for 10 seconds? I mean, they could have. It was the final episode. 
So that was my biggest issues with the final episode. Well, that and <clears throat> Lex was a clone who lost all his memories and became president. I really hate that they erase all his memories. And I especially hate that that's not the real Lex. He's a clone. Nah, it doesn't matter if these guys wake up or not. I can't lift these up? Nope. You know what? Let's show off all the climber's gear. My, let me just say, my eye has been irritated for like three days now. I don't know what's wrong with my eye. I washed it out. I slept, you know, leaving my eye closed for uh, many, many hours. And it's still feeling the same. It still feels like something's wrong with my eye. I don't know what's wrong. So let me just say that. My eye is itching up again. Let me guess. Another blessing? Yeah, another blessing. Is this a metal chest? Ah! I'll take that. I just need 400 more to get all the Sheikah gear. Let me think, what else did I want to talk about? There was a really cringy episode about, uh, uh, how, wait, what's the term? Uh, there was a, there was one episode about sex safety. That was really weird, you know? But both Clark and Lana were like, I thought you did with her. I thought you did with him. Nope, we never did. Yeah, we didn't either. Okay, it's our both of our first time. And then they were caught by Clark's parents. Like, in my defense, I am 18. Yeah. And then... And then at the very end of the message, like off canon, Tom Welling had a no. It wasn't Tom Welling. It was a, it was Allison Mack. She uh -huh. she gave a message like sexual safety is a really big deal. So whatever, I can't even remember what she said. This is a mini game right here. So never mind. Maybe one day I'll do all the mini games, but not right now. Okay, we're finally done with Eventide. I don't remember if there's a shrine on... I think there's a... Yeah, I think there's a shrine on Tingle Island. I think. I can't remember. I'm not going to check that right now. Oh, I think... Yeah, there's a there's a shrine down here too. I could do that. But first, I need to get one... I need to take this. So let me think, what else, what else, aside from majority of the episode in, in the series finale taking place off screen. Now here's a question that I've seen no one really ask. When exactly did Clark give up his powers? Because we know in the Crisis on Infinite Earths cameo scene that Clark gave up his powers to have a family and... To retire, have a family, and have kids with Lois. Well, moments that preceded an unfortunate events. Aha! You missed! And I'm not going to deal with you right now. What was I saying? I can't even remember what I was saying.
So, I, I feel like the Clark and Lois storyline kind of got rushed. Because, you know, Lana took up seven seasons. Seven out of ten seasons. So, Lois and Clark... They only had three seasons together. So, season eight, after Lana left, was, you know, them growing closer. Season nine was them actually becoming a couple. Season ten was, let's get married. Uh, that happened really quick, too. The biggest change was probably during Season 8, after Season 7, because we lost three series regulars there. We, uh... Well, they just the, the actors just left the show. So we lost Lionel Luther, Lex Luther, and Lana Lang. All characters starting with L's. So we lost those three characters, so probably Season 8 was the biggest change for the show. We did get, instead, we got Tess Mercer. We got, uh, 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 we got Tess Mercer played by Cassidy Freeman. We got Kara Kent, not Kara, not Kara Danvers, like the ones we know. Oh, there's another one. There's another... Uh, another rock missing, that's why. And I think Oliver became a, a series regular there. I think my favorite episode overall might have been Absolute Justice. Yep. The one that had the Justice Society of America. We got to learn a backstory. We got to learn the legacy of these these characters. We got Hawkman. We got Stargirl. We got Dr. Fate. We even see at the very beginning Starman got killed by Icicle Jr. Which, uh, by the way, Icicle looked horrible in the show. But that was probably my favorite episode. We got backstories for a bunch of DC characters like Ted Grant, uh, 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 Alan Scott, uh, uh, who else, who else? Um, 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 crap, I'm forgetting! There's just so many characters. Charles McKnight, yeah, we got a backstory for him too. Like, we just got a backstory for each member of the JSA, and that was so cool. We even got to see the classic banner with all the characters. We got to see in the banner Hawkman, Hawk Girl, Doctor Fate. Uh, we got to see Sandman. Oh yeah, Sandman appeared in the show for like 20 seconds. Then he got killed by Icicle, Icicle Jr. We also saw a picture of Spectre on the mural. You know, Jim Corgan. That was just an Easter egg. Col like. Not a collage, but Easter egg heaven for big DC fans like me. Not Sandman from Marvel, Sandman from DC. Which, by the way, does have an audiobook voiced by a lot of characters that... Not characters, actors that I'm familiar with. Like uh, James McAvoy and Samantha Morton. So, I will listen to that 11-hour audiobook. It's just a matter of when will I find time to do that. DC Sandman is also getting a Netflix show, which I, you know I'm going to watch whenever that drops. But yeah, my favorite episode of Smallville was probably Absolute Justice. We got to see the Justice League, or their un, their unofficial uh, version of the Justice League, team up with the Justice Society of America. My least favorite episode, not because it was bad, but because it was so well done and the story was just like, oh my goodness, I hate the story, but you guys did a fantastic job writing it in a way that I would hate the story. Was an episode when, you know, Lionel was in prison. He was, a, he was dying too, so he wanted to switch bodies with Lex Luthor, his own son, 
and leave his own son to die in prison. But uh, but Clark stepped in and he saved Lex. Instead, Lionel switched body with Clark. So now Lionel Luther is in the body of Clark Kent with all his abilities and all that. It's like, oh my goodness, Lionel is going to cause havoc. And then it was really cringe, you know, when, uh, because Lionel, this dirty dog right here, you know, in the body of Clark Kent, he tried, he, he, he got really weird with Martha Kent, you know, Clark's mother. He was like, Martha, can I, can I have a hug? And he just started sniffing her. He's like, ugh, what's the matter with you? And then, and then Clark, Lionel in Clark's body, you know, almost kissed Lana because, you know, he was weirdly attracted to her. It's like, oh my goodness, she's a high school girl. What is the matter with you, Lionel Luther? He, he even got close to Chloe, but he was like, no, you are not meant to be with me as Clark Kent. It's like, you have so many issues, Lionel. I hated that episode because it was so good. It was so well done. I'm gonna smack you with a leaf that only does one damage. I can blow him into the water. Pause. That way he can... Like, they don't... They can't swim. I'm really doing this. I'm really doing this. And just like that. So that's probably my... You would expect an episode that I really didn't like was when Clark got exposed to red kryptonite, changing him completely. It's like, yeah, that was cringe. But it wasn't as cringe as something Lionel did. That's probably my second, le second least favorite episode. When the first time Clark got exposed to, to red kryptonite. But yo, let's list off some of the characters we know are in the world of Smallville. So obviously we have the Justice, um, the Justice Society and the Justice League. Characters we met in Smallville, we met, uh, I'm just going to call them by their code names. So we know characters, well these are characters. So we had obviously Superman, we had Supergirl, Green Arrow, Impulse, Black Canary, uh, Aquaman, Cyborg, Martian Manhunter, Stargirl, Hawkman, Superboy, Blue Beetle. I did not expect Blue Beetle to show up at the very end. I was watching the show, and when the Blue... Well, when the Blue Beetle showed up, I'm like, they're doing Blue Beetle on the show? Are you serious? He only showed up for one episode, because this was season 10. It's like this world is so rich with characters. And you see that slowly build throughout all 10 seasons. And then we also got a whole slew of villains too. At the very end, you know, we got, uh, what well, we had, we had a uh, uh, Winslow, Sh Winslow Shots Toy Man for quite a while. But at the very end, like near the end of season 10, this never, this never led to anything, by the way. He was putting ba putting together, basically, the Injustice League. The Injustice League, we saw, like, we saw characters like Dark Archer, Black Manta, Captain Cold. Like, we saw characters like these that exist in the world. Although it was just, you know, an extra wearing a costume, because they didn't, they, they didn't hire anyone to actually become the characters. Because it was the end of the season. They were just building... And they were just expanding the universe before the show ended. Which, un up until that point, we didn't even see these characters, let alone hear them be mentioned. Yep. Captain Cold, Dark Archer, Black Manta. There were a whole bunch of others, too. But I just couldn't get a good look at them. Because they were all in the shadows. Hawkman did die in the show, which, uh, what a surprise, the Hawks are dead. 
Hawk Girl was already dead in the whole, the, like the whole thing of the show. At first, I hated the way Cyborg looked. He looked nothing like Cyborg. But obviously, Cyborg got introduced, what, 2004? So obviously there would be limitations to how he looked. He, he was just like he was basically just a character in a hoodie, in a gray hoodie. And his cybernetics were underneath his skin. So that's that's where his cybernetic parts came from. Once again, it was not from mother boxes. It was just, you know, experimentation. Not even by Silas either. Not even by Silas Stone. It, it was like, what, Summerhold that did this to, to Vic? To Victor Stone? For some weird reason, when Arthur Curry, a.k.a. Aquaman, showed up, they kept calling him AC. In the final season, when Aquaman showed up for the final time, they introduced Mara. And out of nowhere, he's like, oh yeah, we're married. Me and Mara, we're already married. I'm trying to think, what else do I have to talk about the show? Yeah, AC equals Arthur Curry. I get that, but why Why didn't they, you know, just call him Arthur? Like, literally every other piece of media does. I under- like, you really think I didn't know AC stood for Arthur Curry? So he he was like, my name's Arthur Curry, but you can call me AC. I'm like, why? Kind of weird, but okay. And then they did for the rest of the whole show. Anyways, I didn't even finish my question. Like, when did Clark give up his powers? And how? There's no way he would use gold kryptonite to permanently get take away his powers. He probably has blue kryptonite on him at all times, somehow. See, the thing that, uh, the thing that really makes me question why they close off the character in Crisis was for, in, in Smallville, all ten years, it was... You know, destiny this, trials that, everything you're going through is to teach you a lesson so you can one day embrace your destiny for so you can become the man you are destined to be. As fans, we all knew that was Superman. So 10 years of build-up to become Superman. And 8 years later, I say 8 for a reason, 8 years later, he's like... Oh yeah, I'm going to retire, and I'm going to start a family. Really? That's how you write off the character? So 10 years of building up his destiny, and you're just going to be like, yeah, 8 years later, he just gave it all up to start a family. Maybe Dr. Fate took his powers? Nope, Dr. Fate died. He died... The very f the only episode he ever showed up in. And what's weird is Chloe put on the Fate helmet, so she should have become the next Doctor Fate. I guess not. She put on the helmet to for knowledge when it should have you know when she should have became Doctor Fate. I guess not. I guess not. Also, I didn't even mention this. The way Doomsday died was absolutely stupid. Doomsday died in an explosion. We all know Doomsday feeds off of energy. So the more you attack, the stronger it gets. And Smallville, they killed off Doomsday in an explosion. Uh, I did not like how Season 8 ended. That season, that season had a horrible ending. But hey, uh, there is this end, anyways. Perry White, he showed up for two episodes. Thank goodness 
it was the same actor. Perry White, at the very end, like at the Daily Planet, Perry White did, in, did indeed become chief editor. So I was very happy to see that. I guess it makes sense because Tess Mercer was uh, was in charge, but then she died in the season in the show's finale. She was killed by Lex. So someone needed to replace them. Don't get fooled by those chess people. They look like chess, but they're really Octoroks. Oh, by the way, I didn't know this, so I was shocked when this got revealed. Tess Mercer, you know, I had no idea who this character was. I thought she might have been an homage to Eve Tessmacher. You know, their names sound kind of similar. She had a weird obsession with Lex until she found out she was being used by Lex. So Tess, no wait, T yeah, Tess Mercer, when we saw her birth certificate... It turns out her full name is Lutessa, wait, Lutessa Lena Luther. This whole time she was Lena Luther and I didn't know it. And what a name, Lutessa. What a name. If anyone, if anyone out there is named Lutessa, like, like, what a name. What fantastic name. I've never heard that name before. Lutessa. Yeah, I know I'm over two hours. But that's what happens when you have this show to talk about. This game just has not game. This show just has so much to talk about. <clears throat> ah, I had something else I wanted to bring up, but I totally forgot now. What a name, Lutessa. Turns out she's a Luther too. Oh no, I can't bomb that because I see this! Now I can bomb this. Is that a... is that a... Yep, that's a chest. Hair across. Oh, speaking of which, I'm still shiny hunting Mewtwo. Today is the 20th day that I'm on shiny Mewtwo, or at least I'm trying to get it. Shot better shiny odds, my ass. One out of 100, my ass. I checked my own records too, because of course I have it all written down. Back in Ultra Ultra Moon. Shiny Mewtwo took me 15 days to catch. I say 15. Like, why did it take that long? Because I failed at one time. I reset over a Shiny Mewtwo by accident. And in that game, the Shiny Odds with the Shiny Charm was 1 in 4,900... Uh, one something. No, it was 4,196. That was the Shiny Odds. In this game, with the shiny shiny charm, it's 1 out of 100, and I'm on my 20th day hunting this damn thing. I'll see if I can do this last shrine, and then I'll call it there. Yep. Oh yeah, they also did the, uh... They did the... They somewhat did the Earth 3 storyline. With the, uh... The crime syndicate, in a way. So, uh, Clark accidentally traveled to an alternate Earth. Where, instead of the Kents finding them... Finding Clark... It was Lionel Luther that found Clark. So Clark Luther, on that Earth, Lionel Luther raised him to become Ultraman, a killer. Once again, we never saw him in the suit, but they did Ultraman on the show. So 
So that's interesting. That's fascinating. I never expected that. Oh yeah, one one thing that I wanted to mention. So I never talked about Martha and Jonathan Kent. Fantastic characters. Jonathan Kent. John, John Schneider, the guy who played Jonathan Kent, was so good in this role. He owned that role. He really did seem like a father figure. Like an actual father. Like a believable father on camera. On screen, or should I say. Don't want to damage the fish. And Martha Kent, she was an amazing Martha Kent. You could believe, like, she was a real mother. With the way they acted. But! Excuse me, I had to burp. Smells nasty. But, the way Jonathan Kent died was absolutely horrible. I didn't, I don't mean like he died in a bad way. I mean the way he died was just so terrible. Like, a horrible character death. So, going into the show, I didn't, I, I had a, I had a suspicious feeling. I, I didn't have it confirmed to me, but I just knew that Jonathan Kent was going to die in the show at some point. I didn't know it 100%, but I, I just had a gut feeling. Like, I think I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I know that Jonathan Kent won't survive this entire show. And I was right. Season 5, he died. And what a, what, that was the worst possible death you could have given him. Like, the worst. So, at, so Lionel found out, or discovered Clark's secret. He knows that Clark is indeed an alien. He told Jonathan, like, and Jonathan didn't give him a, didn't give him a chance to explain himself. He was like, you're not going to destroy my family. So he beat the hell up out of Lionel. And in, ter in doing that, he had a heart attack and died. Literally one scene, he beats up Lionel. The next scene, he has a heart attack and collapses. And then the next scene, it's his funeral. It's like, that, 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 that death was absolute garbage. It was so horrible. This was a character that fans loved for five years. He died, he was in the show for five seasons. And they end him off in like 10 seconds. He was a really good character too. And they gave him the, the uh, an absolute horrible death. I think it was really fitting at the very end, like the very end, when Clark got his suit. Wait, are there things up there? Wait a second, let me, I think I remember something. Oh yeah! Yeah! I'm glad I looked! Whoops. I think it was so fitting at the very end, when Clark was getting his suit, Jor-El, you know, the voice of his biological father in the fortress he's like I'm proud of you my son and then Clark was like you have no idea how long I've been waiting to hear you say that so Jor-El you know he first of all he hid the suit it was Martha Kent that made the suit for him but then Jor-El teleported it to the fortress and he hid it for until Clark was ready so Clark was finally ready so he unveiled the, the suit and Jonathan Kent's spirit was there, handing him the suit. So both fathers were giving Clark the Superman suit. That was so perfect. I absolutely love the way that he got his suit. Made by his mother, but given to him by both of his fathers. That was absolutely perfect. Wow, look at that. You know, what, I think I'll save the shrine for next time because uh, it's getting pretty, it's getting pretty long, and I still have things to do. I don't think there's anything else I want to talk about Smallville. I think that might be it.
like I said, the only reason I even watched all 10 seasons was uh, because it did a crossover in Crisis on Infinite Earths. So I will, I am about to watch ha or have seen everything in the Arrowverse except for 1966 Batman. I even saw all of 90s Flash. Damn Octorox. Oh wait, is this a Talus? Yeah, it is. Okay, fine. Let's let's do this Talus and call it there. I'm about to end anyway. Alright, so that was a really quick mini boss. Yeah, that was a mini boss just now. Okay, I think I'm gonna end here. That was a. I've been ranting on for long enough now. Oh boy! Well, I'm done, Smallville, so. Uh, I still have, um. I still have a uh, Legion and Gifted to finish before New Year's because next year in 2021, I have like over 16 different shows to watch. So yeah, I'm trying to finish all that before New Year's. Anyways, that's going to be the it, f the it, that's going to be it for me. Oh boy, I am tired too. It's uh, currently 12.24 a.m. And I am very tired. I have work tomorrow morning too. So, I'm going to end it here. Next time, we're just going to do the shrine right away. There's a shrine right in front of us. You can't see it yet, but we're going to do that next time. Oh, boy. So, thanks for coming, guys, and I'll see you next time. Make sure to save. Fine. There. All right. Bye, guys.